in a league like the Patriot League, the uh, understanding that it's basically a four-year league where you don't have the advantage of a red shirt to develop a kid. So it happens fairly quickly, and the young men that are presently seniors, although we weren't, we were not in the staff that recruited them, they've been with us for four years. And they've, they have met every challenge we've given them. They have developed over that period in our weight room and our conditioning program. And they've also developed the skill of leadership, which I think is critical it makes us better coaches if we can rely on them to be part of the discipline process that it really takes to tie, we're looking at 92 kids together. Uh, you add to that three recruiting classes, uh, kids that'll be juniors, sophomores, and then the kids coming in at freshmen, unique to the league in that uh, there's a majority of them receiving some type of merit aid for football. It will really upgrade the talent of our team and upgrade the talent of the teams across the league. You know, obviously, there's a great deal of parity in this league, uh, so that somewhere in the course of a game, it's going to be a close game. And uh, I keep telling my guys, my staff, my team, that in each and every football game there is, there's a turning point. And you've got to be ready when that turning point occurs. You're not sure whether that is the third play of the game or the last play of the game. You just want to be prepared, and our kids have done a great job of preparing. Coach Susan's a, a great coach. He knows uh, I like his philosophies and what he stands for and a, and a person, as a man and a, and a player. Um, and I felt like he's really done a good job of getting us to buy into the, the bigger picture that he's trying to, to bring to the team. And. Um, you know, I feel like I can speak for a lot of the team that uh, we, we respect him and what he brings to the table. And, uh, you know, this year, last year, you know, we were starting to buy in, but I feel like this year a lot of our players have bought into to what he's bringing. You know, it's funny because some of our opponents, uh, when I meet the head coach at midfield, they point to me, he's still there. Uh, but, but it is a unique situation, and it doesn't happen too often when you're across the board in college football the advocate that's gonna go into his fourth year as a starter. And uh, Brandon came to us as an athlete who played quarterback. And you know, some of the things he does on his feet show that he has really developed as a student of the game and as a quarterback within, when, within our system. They really give, give him uh, an opportunity, what we do and what we ask him to do. It becomes a quarterback-centric offense and that he does a lot of things at the line of scrimmage, um, does some things on his feet that over the course of last, his experience last year and what he did in the spring, it's really come along as a quarterback. Well, I think he's going to have a great year, um, not just because Brandon's a great athlete, but because of the offensive line we're bringing in and just the experience that they've had. Um, you know, they've gotten a lot tougher, I feel like, and if we get if we give Brandon uh, time to throw, he's really I feel like he's really gonna have a productive season. And you know, we all know he can run, so that's always a plus. And I just feel like he's gonna have a great year this year. We want to be balanced, and you know, obviously, balanced uh, in anybody's book is what it takes to put the ball in the end zone. If you have to throw more, if you can run, I think uh, part of what our philosophy is offensively. And I think we're in, in the process of coming along in terms of the offensive line, is run because you can so that you can pass when you want to. Uh, quality at the wide receivers, and I include the tight ends in there. You know, <clears throat> they, they create matchup problems that we'll be able to throw the ball across the board and down in distance. Now, obviously, one of the biggest philosophies offensively is you, you, you want to do what it takes to score touchdowns. But you also want to do what it takes to create manageable third downs. Uh, and by manageable, I'm in that third and three to five, where you're as much a threat to run as you are to throw. And uh, Brandon gives us that opportunity, along with uh, kids like Victor Walker, who's coming back. This will be his fourth year, and uh, either as a starter or as a player. Josh Brake, 
uh, Kyle Sullivan, who is actually a fifth-year kid because he played a year, two years at Rutgers. But then we have some younger talent in, in that group that give, give us a chance to challenge people formationally and challenge people in personnel groups that uh, you want to take advantage of matchups, you want to take advantage of formations that create specific matchups and create leverage. So I think that uh, we will be balanced, but uh, again, it's going to be related to what we do best and we will run the ball. And it's nice to be able to say that. Anybody who plays fullback in this offense uh, 20 years from now will remember he was a fullback with his neck and his shoulders. But uh, Travis has really developed into, number one, he's always been selfless. And I think that's a critical component of being effective at that position. <clears throat> he is a very important blocker in our run game. He's a very important receiver in, uh, in our play action game. He's also a guy that has mastered the ability to protect in third down. So that if we're in a situation where a running back, we don't feel confident about a running back doing it, Travis can do it. And you have to understand the protections. He's a leader, and he's a leader in the best way. He leads by what he does, not by what he says. And uh, I know you had him on camera. It's unique. You probably had to have cue cards up for him to get him to say anything. But uh, those are the leaders I love. Well, when I came into college, uh, we ran a wing team in high school, so I ran the ball a lot. So, um, you know, it was different at first, but at the same time, I'm not one to, you know, if I have a job, I'd, I'd get it done. And, um, you know, really wasn't a big transition for me. Uh, just running my feet on contact in a block and engaging in a block was something I had to work on at first, and I'm still working on. But um, as far as, like, running the ball and stuff, like, I completely understand. I'm not a running back. You know, I'm, I'm there to block for, for uh, you know, my running back, so I'm perfectly fine with my job. Football is similar to other sports in that the middle of your group has to be strong. Now, offensively, it's your center, your quarterback, your fullback, your tailback. Defensively, it's your interior defensive line, your linebackers, and your safeties. And, uh, you know, the quality we have with on the defensive front with Tracy Smith and Sean Sellers. But I, I, I mentioned this to an alumni group the other day. We can name three people at every position that give us a chance to be, uh, especially on the, specifically on the defensive line, give us a chance to be able to play a variety of different combinations. Uh, Sean Sellers being a challenge for the offensive tackles in this league and the leagues we play against in terms of speed. I think Evan Byer is one of the better linebackers in this league. And then Matt Steinbeck, who really stepped into his own as a sophomore free safety, is really going to do a great job. So that middle of the defense is uh, something we feel very good about. The depth we have across the board defensively <clears throat> really gives us a chance, obviously, to be effective, but to also be able to gear up what we do in terms of our movement schemes, in terms of our pressure schemes, and uh, that is what we do best. I think we're very athletic there. We have some quickness, and that's the nature of defense nowadays, a lot of movement. Not too many people are personnel to the point where they just stand and play their gaps. And as an offensive, as primarily as an offensive coach most of my life, somebody's gonna sit in a defense unless they're that much better than you, which there's so much parity in football, uh, you can pick them apart. But, and that's the nature of this league. This league is a movement specific defensive league. Now, obviously kids that are better athletes and uh, I feel we have that in comparison to the other teams in the league across the board on our defenses.